Hey everyone, this is Trevor with FX Editing, and we're going to do another tutorial here where uh, I'm going to show you how to create or how to animate text for a lower third. Fancy. Alright. Uh, you can just create a comp for this. We're not going to we're not going to do any elements or whatever. And we'll call it lower third with 1920 by 1080. All this looks good. We can make it uh, one. We can make it two seconds. Just give a little room to see it there. All right. Now what we want to do is we want to type out and lay out how we want our text to appear. So if you hit Command T, it'll give you your text tool. Or if you come up here to your text area, it's a horizontal type tool. You can just press it, and then you just type in here. And we will go. We'll type in John Doe. You can hit your Enter key over at your number pad to get out of editing text. In V, if you hit V, or if you click your arrow, you'll get back to selection tool. So Command T will give you this, V will give you this. They also have the shortcuts in parentheses there, so H for hand tool. So just whenever you're going up, kind of look at those so you can start getting used to those. Save, save seconds here and there. All right, um, you should have white uh, by default, but if you don't, if you have a color or it's black, um, just select all your text essentially. <clears throat> you can come over here to your color, your character palette, and put your just put the eyedropper over white. They already have a black and white there for you, since that's those are common colors you use. And we'll set that to white. Enter. We'll bring it down here. I'm going to bring up my title safe, which is the apostrophe key, and we want it to be roughly there. And uh, I'm going to change this to Helvetica, because I know you all have Helvetica. That way, we all look the same. So Helvetica, regular, I'll bring it up, and actually let's make it bold. There we go, nice and bold name. Now uh, cre let's create another text field. Um, we can either hit Command T and type again, or you can, with this select, you can hit Command D. It creates another text file, and then you can move it around. So I do that because I want to have it lined up perfectly with the left of uh, this text that I just typed. So uh, if you click and then hold shift, you can drag along the Y axis or the X axis evenly and it doesn't lose. And that way you can keep it perfectly aligned on the left, ax on the left side. And now we wanna change this to fancy guy. Now that's too big. You want the name to kind of be bigger than the subtitle. So we'll bring that down to regular, and we'll change the size. What I'm doing to change the size is this, um, set the font size, I'm just clicking and dragging the number. And that's good. Enter to exit out of it, and then just bring it up. We close our title safe, that's our default lower third that we're creating, John Doe fancy guy. All right. Um, now, first step is we're going to colorize Fancy Guy. So you can just zoom in, Command Plus. Uh, and also, what I just did there, sorry. If you zoom in and you can't see anything, um, scroll isn't going to scroll down for you. What you, have, what you want to do is hold down Spacebar, and it gives you the temporary hand tool, so you can click and drag um, everything around. And once you let go of Spacebar, space it will go back to your whatever tool you're currently in. Handy little tip, just dragging around. All right, so if we double click in here and we double click one of the words, we can come over to our character palette. And if you click this big square here, this is where you actually change the color. And we'll click yellow and it actually live updates. So we, whatever colors you pick, it will live update. So we'll pick yellow and then we'll double click guy and we'll change it to green. You tend to want to stay away from red when you're creating graphics for television because it creates a lot of aliasing on the edges uh, and it looks pretty ugly a lot of the time. Um, okay, so we got fancy guy, yellow and green. That's how you change color. You can do it to every single letter. We could change this C to blue if we wanted. 
we essentially want fancy guy. So that's how you change colors. And then next, what we want to do is create um, two text layers here. So you want John and Doe to be two separate layers. So what we're going to do is get down on the timeline here, just for um, clarity, I'm going to take fancy guy and move it down. So this is, this is kind of part of the beauty and struggle of After Effects is there is no, hey, I want this to be two words, so make it two words. I mean, there are plugins out there, but we're not going to be covering plugins in these tutorials. Um, a lot of what you have to do in After Effects is kind of manual labor. So what we want to do is duplicate this layer. So now we have two John, John Does right on top of each other. And we want it to be in this positioning. So if you double click this layer or double click it up here, it'll give you editing options. And we want to click from the left side of the D over to the left side of John and get rid of all that. So now this is just dough. And we want to click, hold down your click, and then hold down shift. You always have to click first and then hold down shift in order to get uh, linear movement on X and Y. You can't hold shift before you click, it won't work. And so we want to shift and click this along the X axis and line it up with the dough of the layer below. So now dough is on top and now the easy part, we just cl double click on the layer below it and delete dough. And now you have John Doe in the same exact place you created it, but it's two separate layers. There's a lot of that in After Effects. Um, that's how it does get confusing to some people because they're just like, I don't understand why I can't split this up. And it really just does take extra work. All right. So now that we have that split up, I'm going to teach you my favorite fancy little move that kind of gives a pop to a lot of animations. It's a five frame pop that I do in just about every graphic I ever create. What we're going to do is on John, and Do, select both of them. We can hit S to reveal the scale. All right, and before we get to scale, um, what we want to do is change the anchor point of each one of these because they're going to pop from the middle. So what we need to do is take our anchor point, um, which is what the key, the shortcut is Y. It's also up here, it's the square up here. And then you want to drag it to just about the middle of John. And then do the same thing with Do. Drag the anchor point to the center of dough. All right, now what we want to do is we want to select John and click the keyframe for scale at the fifth frame. And then we're going to go back two frames. We're going to click scale. You can click it to edit the number or you can drag. So we're going to click it and we're going to change the number to 125. See how it that's how it scales for two frames. And then we're gonna go one, two, three, back to zero, or you can hit home. And we're gonna take scale to zero. And what that does is it just does a very simple little pop. So in fast motion, it's just got like a little flare to it as, instead of just you know popping on and being boring. Um, I use it and everything. It's just such a great way to make things pop. And so what we want to do is the same thing for Doe. We don't even have to reanimate keyframes. All we have to do is click and drag around these three keyframes, Command C, select Doe, and then wherever your cursor is, is where it will start the first keyframe that you're pasting. So if we hit Command V, it'll start right here. Um, and that way, John pops on, then Doe pops on. So if we take Fancy Guy away, John Doe pops on. And then just to add a little motion blur, you can just click the motion blur icons here, which is the three circles layered on top of each other. Click the motion and then click it, enable it for the composition. And then you get yourself. It's hard to see the motion blur in such a quick, small motion, but uh, you freeze frame it, you'll see there. So if I disable it, it's just a solid letter. This actually shows the motion. It's just a nice extra touch. All right, and now what we want to do is uh, animate fancy guy in, fading in one word at a time. So what we could do is what we just did with John Doe. We could split up the word evenly and then uh, animate the opacity. 
um, for each word, one after the other. But you saw, I already showed you how to do that with this, so now I'm going to teach you another method to manipulate text um, that's a little more advanced. It's really easy once you get into it. Um, and feel free to never use this and do it the harder way just by splitting up words, but this is kind of um, gives you more control. So if you twirl down your little triangle next to fancy guy and you come over here, there's a animate. This is under every text file that you text layer that you create in After Effects. If you click the uh, little circle with an arrow in it and select opacity. It's going to give us this range selector under animator one, range selector one. So we want to twirl down range selector and then twirl down advanced. And this is our this is our zone right here. So what we want to do in here, we don't need to know what everything is right now. I, I can explain these later if everybody's interested in more tutorials about this, I can, but we're going to just cover the basic stuff that we need. So right now we're going to take opacity to zero because that's the opacity that we want them to start at. We want them to fade up to 100%. And then on based on, we want it to be words instead of characters. So you can have it fade every single letter on, or you can have it fade words on, or entire lines if you have paragraphs of information. So we're just going to change it to words because we want fancy and guy to fade in one after the other. The next thing we do is when we animate it on. So just a little bit, probably like two frames after Doe pops on, so 12 frames. Um, I'm going to set a keyframe on offset. An offset is how you animate on um, elements that you're animating. So uh, it, you can see you can f do it backwards, you can do it forwards. Um, clicking and dragging it changes it. So we set a keyframe of 0% at 12 frames. And then uh, if you hit shift page down three times, one, two, three. Uh, you can go about a second later, and we'll just drag this all the way up to 100. And we can see how, how long it takes for that to animate. So if we hit our zero key to preview, it's a little long for fancy guys. So what we can do is click and drag this keyframe wherever we want. So let's just drag it to one second, four frames maybe. There you go. Pop, pop, fade, fade. Pop, pop. Uh, so yeah. So that's how you pop and fade and using animate. So animate's super powerful and it's easy to use once you understand it and you can do a lot more with all these extra things. So I highly suggest kind of messing around with it and just seeing what you get out of it. Um, but that's how you animate. And then what you want to do now that you have um, your animation done, you typically would want this to be about 10 seconds, um, 10 or 15 seconds. However, you know, the, sh the longest you think an interview might be, add maybe five more seconds just so you're super safe. And then uh, we can output it. So you hit Command M or you go up to com Composition, Add to Render Queue. And it'll come over to the Render Queue. Now, there's a bunch of settings and I'm going to do a tips video that just kind of runs through different setting options. But all you need to know for clips that need an alpha channel, which is transparency, which is something that you can see through, you can put over top of footage. Uh, you, on this output module, you need to click this little arrow right here. Yours won't say online, that's just a custom one I made. Um, yours probably says lossless if it's default After Effects. But what you want to set it to is lossless with alpha. Really easy. If you're out outputting something with alpha, output with lossless with alpha. Make sure your render settings are at best settings. Sometimes it's set to current settings. Um, rarely. It's usually set to best settings, but just double check. And then to output, you just click the word and you can uh, save it wherever you want. So desktop, lower third, seems good. QuickTime Movie, save and then just click render and so if you go to your finder go to your wherever you output it this is another fun issue is uh, if you are in one of the more recent issues of the OSX you won't be able to preview it in finder that's because Apple likes to f mess with people uh, with their codecs so in order to preview it 
I would suggest opening it in QuickTime Player 7. If you open it in QuickTime Player, it's going to try to convert it and take, take the Apple channel out, of, essentially. So if you open it in QuickTime 7, you can see your fancy art. It shows up as black, but there's an Apple channel. When you bring it into something, uh, you can lay it on top. Uh, if you guys got any questions, leave your comments in, in the comments section and uh, let me know. If you have any ideas for future tutorials, let me know and uh, we can get them happening. Uh, thanks. See you next time.